Hello all. Um, I shouldn't be filming this video right now because first of all, I have a cold. So I might, like I do sound very stuffy, which might be very annoying for you to listen to. Two, the sun is almost going down because it's 3.30 right now and the sun goes down at like 4.30, something like that. I don't know. I don't have any direct lighting going on in my room right now. And then third... I have to leave for dinner at like 4.30 because we're doing a Thanksgiving dinner at my home, even though we don't practice Thanksgiving in Belgium. But my mom wants to do it because she likes the food. I don't particularly, but my grandma's coming over, so I want to see her. Okay, so I want to keep it snappy. I don't have that much to talk about right now, uh, which is good because then we can keep it snappy and keep it going. So if you're new here, this is my knitting podcast. I talk about stuff that I've finished. I talk about stuff that I'm currently making, and I talk about new yarns that I have, although I don't really buy yarns that often. Now, I'm not wearing anything self-made today, um, but I will talk about the thing that I finished that I'm most proud of. This I call the Sean sweater. This is a sweater made in Drops, Alaska, in the color wheat, I think it would be in English. It's called in Dutch, so I don't know. Um, this is a freehand sweater, and this is actually like the first freehand sweater I've ever made. I've made two cardigans before freehand, actually three. So my pearly and pink cardigan I published. I made a blue and white starry cardigan with raglan, which was successful, but writing a pattern for it was not. And then I made another cardigan, which was very unsuccessful. And this is the very first drop shoulder sweater that I've freehanded for myself, and... I even added German short rows, as you can see right here. I did not know, the color is a bit more murky than I would have liked. It has some green undertone to it, which I don't particularly like. Um, it's not as warm as I wanted the color to be. And Drops Alaska, I didn't know, is very, very scratchy. So if you're not, if you're very sensitive to that or you just hate that, don't get it. Um, but it looks nice. Before I blocked it, it looked like this, and I thought that was... I tried it on, and I was like, oh my god, the sleeves are too short, the body's all bad, like the front seemed to be narrower than the back, so the sleeves would pull forward, but then I blocked it, and then it was fine. Um, and it took like three days for this thing to dry, because it's... First of all, it's humongous and super heavy, but now that I blocked it, it's actually really, really nice, and I think it looks really professional. And I can add, like, while I'm talking, a TikTok on the side of me blocking it. So if you want to see that, just, like, have a look at your screen in between my talking. Um, but, yeah, the neckline, I went with a 2x2 two two because I thought that would look nice with the cables because the cables are also 2x2. Two two. And then I did the same for the cuffs and for the ribbing at the bottom. It has a boxy oversized fit, but without being it too long, which I personally really like. Um, I'm not going to try it on right now because that's just... It's gonna ruin my makeup and um, I showed you in that TikTok. The idea behind this sweater um, was that I saw a picture of Shaun the Sheep from that BBC or like not BBC from that um, Atmom animation like you know Shaun the Sheep and he was wearing an Aaron Cable sweater and I love Aaron sweaters but personally I hate making them. I'm not that much of a fan of cables and I thought about the fact that I had never seen like a cable sweater or an errand sweater that was like a little bit more simplistic and so I thought how about I just recreate that sweater to a certain extent so I added three diamond cables like Sean has Sean the sheep on his sweater and then I just put pearl stitches in between and then one twisted knit stitch in between those cables to um distinguish the cables from each other and I think it turned out really well um I, I need to get it there I had to like start over a couple of times with like the shoulders before I connected the neckline to create the entire body because I was just trying to figure out how I could like cast on extra stitches while uh remaining in pattern and yeah I got really frustrated but it worked out fine and then it actually went by pretty quickly because I made this on five millimeter needles and drops the last guy's rather chunky so it actually goes by even faster um i do want to make a pattern for this one um and i basically have the entire pattern written down for the sweater without the cables um it's the cable part that is kind of annoying me because i've written everything down measurement wise um but trying to get those cables onto different sizes and having it in the middle 
like symmetrically is really hard so i have to like adapt the neckline um stitches and like the shoulder stitches in order to place it nicely on there and i'm also struggling with trying to figure out whether i should make the cables wider when the sizes get bigger or if i should add um maybe an extra cable row but that's going to be like too much i think or if i should just like keep the amount of cables and stitches i have and then just add extra socket on the side um because um up to now because i just simply don't have the means to i'm not smart enough to and i don't have enough testers to test any sizes above 2xl i've actually never had anyone apply for a size above xl so it's really hard for me with my small audience to get any testers for bigger sizes and i'm not equipped to do that math it takes me really long to even get up to these sizes and because this is more like a side job for me it's like not even a job it's more like a hobby that i make some money off um i do in the future if i take this pattern making business more seriously then of course i would love to go up to a 5xl um which is the standard nowadays for uh, knitting but so far i'm keeping it at 2xl and i've looked into the moby sweater by petite knit and she does her her cables remain the same like exactly the same up to a xl and then only with a 2xl starting there she makes the cables a little bigger um, so i might do that for my xl my xxl but i i don't know i think it might actually just be fine if i keep it like this because the cables take up so much space on the front so i think just adding that extra stuck in that stitch might not look that weird on bigger sizes but if you have an opinion on this or if you have any tips on how i can grade the cables please let me know in the comments because that would be really helpful because i'm really struggling like on stitch fiddle trying to draw everything and do all the math for it but yeah that's the sean sweater and i'm really happy with it and i'm also planning on making um another sweater with that pattern but with color work or maybe even a solid color one um and maybe i'll even bring out the pattern for the sweater without the cables because i basically have everything written down for that and then i can just focus on creating a pattern for the sweater with the cables once i have more time because my exams are also coming up and stuff so i don't really know how i'm gonna do that the second project that i have going on i told you guys that i would only work on two projects at a time um i am still doing that kind of but I'll just talk about this one first because it's actually not going anywhere. I have two big, I have one full and then almost one full skein or ball of drops air left from the weekend sweater that I made for my cousin. And I, I didn't know what to do with it. And while I was riding my bike to school, I forgot my scarf and I just felt really cold. And also the icy cold wind would get through the zipper of my jacket. So I figured maybe I could make like a neck warmer and I looked into some of the patterns on the drops website and I just gathered some inspiration from there and then I figured I want to make a neck warmer in two by two rib with a neck that closes with buttons. Like I don't know what you would call that but it's basically like a zipper sweater with buttons instead but all I have so far is just these like three centimeters that would be like the chest area for it but yeah that's all i have to tell like say about it maybe i'll make a pattern for it one day too but it's really not on the top of my list right now to finish or anything so let's get on to a more exciting thing by the way the sean sweater is the only thing i finished i think this month oh besides that but i'm not really going to talk about that i made a garland with christmas socks and um i don't know i don't think i've made a it's in my previous, you can see them in my previous video. I filmed kind of the process. I made six little socks with, like I made three solid color ones. I made a white one, a red one, a green one. And then I made a stripy one with red and green, white and red and white and green. And I made a long eye cord and I strung them up. And here's a picture. I'll put something on the screen so you can see. Um, I worked that up in a week because I was like all of a sudden really excited about Christmas even though it's not even December yet and here in Belgium we celebrate a different holiday before we celebrate Christmas so I feel like I'm doing it kind of early um, but I made that with some leftover acrylic yarns that I had lying around or like just random stuff for my stash that I wanted to get rid of and so I thought this was a good idea. 
now I'm okay wait I'm gonna talk about something else first because the third thing I want to talk about kind of has to do with some yarn that I got so the thing I was working on right now actually is also very impulsively I started this last week or two weeks ago and I'm making this balaclava and I wasn't planning on making a balaclava I didn't feel like I needed a balaclava because I love the look of balaclavas and I love making them but I don't actually like wear them that much my best selling pattern is my balaclava hood which I am still really proud of and I do really love that people enjoy it so much but um I just forget about wearing it because instead of wearing a hat I just wear my headphones because the the main reason why I would wear a hat on my bike is for my ears because I get those like really painful stings in my ears when it's cold but when I wear headphones that's no problem and most of the times if you wear a balaclava putting headphones over it is kind of annoying but to get back to the story I had found this picture like looking at it now I, I keep seeing like little mistakes I made which we're not going to focus on but I found this little graph on Pinterest and I don't know where it's from but I suppose because it's free on Pinterest like there's no copyright on it or anything and so I just started by making a little swatch because I was planning on getting better um, with color work and strand color work and all that. And I figured maybe I could make a little swatch with this because I do really love the way that all of those flowers um, like become this kind of geometric pattern. And so I made a little swatch with four flowers. Um, and then I figured what can I make with this because I hate swatching and then not doing anything with a swatch. So I decided to turn it into a balaclava and so I just picked up stitches along three of the four sides and then started working down and I did put them on there in such a way that the flowers would fit on there and I do want to make a pattern of this too um, and yeah and I do always like having a little touch to my balaclavas. I'm making it with leftover Malabrigo Rios yarn in the color lettuce which I also used for my chestnut sweater and then um, some Anel Malmö, I think. I'm not sure. I This is yarn that I bought for my boyfriend because he wanted to learn how to knit and then he never did. So I said, give me back that yarn and I was going to make something with it. And so I made this. And I do really like the flowers. Like green with blue is never something that I would wear myself. It's almost black, but it's blue. Um, I never thought about wearing this myself, but I think I actually might because it's turning out really nice. Um, I don't know yet if I'm gonna finish because I'm gonna start with the like connecting the front in three rows I think but by that time the flower won't be finished so I don't know yet if I should just finish the third flower or if I just like cut off the pattern and then work on the neck part more and I also don't know if I might do two by two rib or one by one I think one by one might look nicer for this because it is such a sophisticated like thin pattern I think like a thin rib might look nice too and I also want to do a folded rib on my balaclava hood I did double knitting here I want to do a one by one and then just sew it on the inside so it's also a double and it's going to be a rather fitting one right now it's more of a bonnet but I think it's it's going to be pretty fitting it's not going to be oversized like my balaclava hood was um, and so that's why I also think a one by one rib might be nice so that it actually like um, How'd you say it like connects nicely or fits nicely on my neck and it's not like kind of loose Because I do like the look of like a drastic change in your brow clava like going from boxy to tight and all that um, Yeah, so that's that and I think it's really nice both of these yarns are 100% wool So it's also gonna be really warm and not sweaty and I hope it's gonna fulfill my vision. I actually don't have a real vision for this, but I hope it's gonna turn out nice because it's taken me a really long time and a lot of effort for me to finish this. So I don't know why my camera stopped filming, but we perfectly ended with that balaclava. So let's continue with this. Um, ooh, this is kind of dangerous to run around with, but I had bought the pattern for the sweater number 26 a while ago because from the first time that I saw that sweater, I was like, yes, yes, I need that. Not with a twisted rib though, because I don't like the look of a twisted rib. So I just figured I'm gonna do a one by one rib or a two by two rib. <gasps> Maybe I should do a two by two rib. Because, let me backtrack. I bought that pattern because I had envisioned 
a sweater with large dark blue and a little bit of a jeans blue stripes. And I thought a big boxy kind of masculine with feminine elements like kind of sweater would be perfect for that because I wanted to be like the look of like an oversized knit sweater and the, with like a hoodie underneath. I'm not that of a tomboy to wear something like that. Like I'm not very feminine in my clothing and stuff, but I like that's going to be over the top for me, but I just like that's how boxy I wanted it to be. And so I thought the sweater number 26 would be perfect for that. And luck has it, right when I decided on that design, or like design, I mean, the idea I had, what I wanted to do, and I found the pattern for it, um, Kremka Sowul actually texted me or DM'd me, and they were like, can we send you some of our new yarn to try out? And like, you don't have to do anything with it, but we just want you to try it out. It's the new G- GOTS um, Merino, and they have it for like they have like a sports weight a dk and a worsted weight i think i'm not sure and i got the gots 110 which is for five to six millimeter needles and i think i'm gonna sneeze anyway um i and i was like this is perfect i want to try the 110 because it's perfect for a five like it's not too chunky i think the drops alaska both of these are made with five millimeters but the Drops Alaska is clearly chunkier, even when it's knit with 5.5. Five. The gauge is bigger than with this one. And so I requested from them, it's actually really close in color with that other yarn. Um, and so I requested that yarn from them and I have more yarn from them, but I'm gonna show that to you on a separate occasion because it's gonna be in the same video, but I'm just not gonna show it right now because I don't have it with me, but I got more yarn from them, but I wanna talk about that later. And so I started on this one this week because I was just very impatient. And I must say, that pattern is a mess. I'm sorry. I, the, like, I, thought a, I thought that saddle shoulders could be constructed in a sort of raglan way that you start with a neckline and then you just start doing it. But apparently you have to knit the saddle shoulder separately and then pick up stitches and then go around and this and that and then... I felt like every other row I had to put my stitches on hold and then cut the yarn and then reattach it and then cut it again. And so there were so many loose ends and I'm working with stripes. So there were even more loose ends from changing colors. But eventually we got there and now we're working on the yoke. Um, one thing that I did do wrong, this is the only side where I picked up my stitches correctly. As you can see, it's just nice. But then on all, all three other sides, you can see the light blue popping through. And there's no way in hell that I'm going back to fix that. So I'm just going to embroider over it with that dark blue. Um, and I'm alternating my colors every like 22 rows or something like that. And my biggest challenge with this, but I'm also filming this in a separate like vlog video. My biggest problem with this was how am I going to connect the stripes perfectly when I'm... Because I knit the shoulders first and then... Um, as you can see, if you want the stripes to continue perfectly on the shoulders, but you're also working German short rows on the back, that means that you're going to have a lot of blue where you do the short rows. Because I couldn't just change my color on the back to the dark blue when I reached those 22 rows in the light blue, because then my stripe, my light blue stripe on the side would be way too short because I hadn't reached that yet with my German short rows. So I figured I'm just going to keep it clean and have it like the colors follow each other perfectly on the shoulders and then just have a little bit more light blue on the neckline and on the back. Like I didn't mind it that much. Thinking about it now, I should have just done my short rows in the dark blue and then changed to the light blue so that it would be a small dark blue stripe and then the perfect amount of light blue and then just continue because now I just have a lot of light blue and I think having a rather thin dark blue might have been better because then my regular pattern of stripes would have started earlier. Whereas now, it only starts with the dark blue here. The yarn, to talk about that, is so, so soft. It is literally heaven to knit with. And I feel like I say that about every yarn, but the Drops Alaska, for example, is very scratchy. Kind of felt like it was... Um, burning on my fingers this is literally it's like boiled spaghetti it's that smooth it's like you're knitting with slimy not slimy 
but like smooth gliding spaghetti. It's so lovely and it's super soft and I think it's machine washable at 30 degrees Celsius, but I'm, don't quote me on that. But yeah, if you, it's their new yarn. So if you wanna check them out, you should definitely do it. It's lovely. I have more yarns from them that I will show you later. But I think this sweater is gonna be so beautiful when it's finished, but I haven't been able to continue working on it because all of I only brought two skeins um, with me to my apartment and then all of the other stuff is at home with my mom. Um, same goes for the other yarns I wanna show you. So currently, that's all I have to show you and I think that's enough. And now I'm going to continue working for school and then I'm going to that fucking play and then I'll see you on another day when I can show you my other yarns and then we're gonna close this down. It's gonna be a little short and sweet podcast, but we wanna stay consistent even though we don't have a lot of things to talk about, but that's okay. And I should get started on my everything I knit in 2023 video. Hmm. But that's for later. Okay, bye. I also have two other videos in the working, but that doesn't matter. I don't have to tell you now because we're gonna continue this video anyway. Okay, so we're back for the last part of the video. Um, I edited the first half. It's about 20 minutes, so it's gonna be really short, shorter than I thought, actually. The weather is really weird today, so it is really dark in my room. It was sunny a while ago, but um, I was working, and so I didn't get the chance to film then. I went home yesterday for that Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, and um, I forgot to bring yarn with me back to my apartment. So I'm not able to show you the Kremko wool in person, but I have some very short clips of the yarn from when I was unboxing it. So I can show it to you in that way, and then I'll just like talk about him, like talk about the yarns for memory. Um, but that's for later. First, I forgot that I actually have another whip going on. And it's a whip that I'm, I, I, I'm gonna love it once it's finished. And I love the yarn, but I don't really love the process of making it. Um, this is going to be the Big Burrito Cardigan by Wool & Beyond. Um, I saw it for the very first time and I fell in love with it, which is weird because usually I'm not a fan of garter stitch at all. But I thought, and usually I also don't wear wrap cardigans. So it was like two things that I would think personally, my camera is dirty, I think. And so those were like two things that usually I don't like in a pattern, but for some reason, stop texting me. For some reason, sorry, that's my boyfriend. He's going to adopt a puppy, um, which is actually nice. But Oh my God, I sound so mean. Okay, it's, whoa, it got really dark outside all of a sudden. Anyway, um, so usually I don't like garter stitch and I don't like wrap cardigans just because I don't feel like I have the body type for wrap cardigans and you always have to make sure that the top you're wearing underneath is like nice enough so that it can show beneath it, which um, is just going to be a white t-shirt for me. But what kind of pushed me over the edge is because I had still um, left, I still had leftover yarn, or not, not even leftover, I hadn't started it, but I had a bunch of skeins from Malabrigo still, the same brand which I made my chestnut sweater in. And I looked at the color that I had and I looked at the color that she had from Wool and Beyond and she had this uneven pastel purple color and I have this uneven pastel pink color and this is all I have left from the skein and I hope that you can see it because it's so dark right now. I mean the sun is going to go down in like half an hour because it's 4 p.m. right now. Um, but it's this uneven pink and I don't know what you would call this because I'm also really bad at saying if something is DK weight or a worse weight or whatever but this is a single strand yarn single spun or whatever but it is a sport weight I think it is for four millimeters sometimes it's a little thinner than like a normal sport weight and so it would be more appropriate for three millimeters but because I'm working that garter stitch I feel like you don't see how big the stitches actually are and so this cardigan, the construction is rather strange as well. So you start working a double um, knit, like edge, neck edge, and then you put that on hold and then you make another one and then you connect them, which you can see here. And then you um, pick up stitches to start your yoke. And from then on, you continue to 
work the yoke and then at the end of every row you work that double edge which I quite like actually because that way you don't have to work the double knit edge all the way at the end like I had to do with my champagne cardigan because then that really felt like a pain in the ass. Right now, if I'm just doing nine stitches of double knitting each row, I feel fine. It's like, it doesn't feel like such a commitment. But um, I'm gonna try and show you. It's a round yoke. It's like, like you do with strand color work, it's spread out increases every 16 rows or whatever for my size. I must say the pattern is written quite confusingly as well. Um, I had never bought a pattern from her before, but I think I've heard it before from other people that her patterns are not always the clearest. Um, and so I was rather confused about when I had to start my increases or how I had to do my increases. And then only at like at the I I don't particularly read my entire pattern before I start because I feel like with petite knit which I knit the most that doesn't feel necessary so I felt like with wool and beyond I should have read the whole pattern before starting because I was doing my increase rows wrong because apparently you had to like um, keep adding on stitches in between yarn overs to create like your yoke and I didn't know that so I had to start over a little bit and then. I'm not excited. This is not her fault, but that's just like part of the construction, which I'm not a fan of. But once the length is 18 centimeters measured from the back, I also have to start increasing on the edges for, of course, the overlapping part. So I'm just going to have to be very careful. This is not going to be a project that I can work on like like when I'm watching TV or something. I'm going to have to like really pay attention to this because once because now I'm still increasing the yoke, but I'm also gonna have to start paying attention to what I have to do every other row for the overlapping parts. So that's gonna be pretty confusing, I feel like. But again, the yarn is really soft. I had actually never worked with like a single strand um, of yarn before, like not a single strand, but like, what do you, one ply, one ply yarn. I'd never worked with one ply yarn before, but I really love how it's turning out. Now it kind of looks like, told my friends this, like one of those big um, mushrooms, I don't know if you can call it a mushroom, like the fungus that grows on trees. We call them like um, alpha trapjes or alpha bitches, which is like fairy, fairy, fairy seat or something. Um, I think it looks like that. It looks like a big mushroom, big fungi, fungus. But yeah, um, that because I'm just so excited about the sweater number 26 right now this one is going by a little more slow also because it's on four millimeters and I'm just like really excited to work with five millimeters recently so um when there is a five millimeter project around I will be working on that before I work on the four millimeter but I think this could also be kind of cute to wear for Christmas although I don't think it'll be done by Christmas but we'll see maybe if I'll be strong enough mentally to put other stuff aside and work on that one first because I have these cutest little Mary Janes that I got in uh, Rotterdam a while ago and they would be so cute with that and like a little skirt and whatever. Okay. Then, last but not least, is the yarn that I don't have with me. Um, I was allowed to pick and choose from that new collection and then also um, pick and choose from other collections from Kremke Soul Wool. And um, so I chose the light blue and the dark blue that I uh, showed you before for the sweater number 26. And from that same line, also the same weight, I chose a chocolatey brown color, which was a little bit warm and it was just a regular like chocolate brown. And I paired that with a slightly darker brown, which was a silk mohair or an alpaca mohair. I'm not sure anymore, not exactly sure, but that was the closest color match I could find between their yarns like colors between the two types and with that i'm planning to make the zipper sweater by petite knit that is for not like right now because again i'm trying to limit my whips um when like a year ago i would have five or six whips at the same time but i'm really trying not to do that this school year so i can focus on school and etc etc but that's boring um so i work I will be working on that when I finish either one of the two sweaters I'm working on right now or if I finish a pattern, etc. Um, but I think it will be beautiful in a dark, dark brown. And I think it's going to be like her zipper sweater light that she has. I think she also made that in like a chocolatey, warm, dark brown. And that's what I want to do. But I had bought the pattern a while ago and it's also made with five millimeters. So it's going to buy 
nice and quick and I also really like a zip up like a half zip up because I don't usually like turtlenecks but I just really like the look of a zip up sweater and I used to wear my boyfriend's green um, Ralph Lauren zip up all the time last year um, it was like the sweater I was I wore most of the time he didn't get to wear it for like a year so I thought maybe I should make like my own variation and it's not gonna be as fine as his but I like it chunky not chunky but like a little bit of a chunkier zip up so those yeah so the mohair is different from the other yarns and then a little backstory my mom they're actually right here let me show you my mom has these two pair of socks and I always steal them from her um, but my mom always she likes to invest in like nice looking socks which I don't I wear random sports socks but that's why I steal hers because I don't feel like I want to spend money on socks but then I love having nice socks and these are my all-time favorite socks but they're actually hers and I just wear them all the time but then recently she dropped the info that these socks are actually socks that she bought when she was an au pair in England in like 1995 or something um, when she was in college and then I felt bad about wearing them because I've been wearing down the heels etc so I feel kind of obliged right now to make my own pair so I can give these back to her and then she said she wasn't that emotionally attached to them but I felt this was a perfect opportunity to make my very first pair of socks because I've never made socks before in my life and I saw that Kremke had this Edel, it was called the Edelweiss Alpaca 6 ply and um, I decided they had the perfect pink and the perfect purple to make these socks and I was obsessed and so I got it and when I received that yarn in the mail it was the softest yarn I have ever touched it was it was amazing and I was like yeah I'm making socks with this and I know you should use like special sock yarn with a little bit of polyamide or what I don't know what, what is polyamide in English like a little bit of a synthetic fiber in there so that they don't wear down as much but I don't care I'll wear them as like socks to wear in my slippers when I'm at home to have them as my cozy socks to sleep in them I don't care and that it'll buy so back out wow wow I, I was just imagining like making like a little soft baby sweater or something in it I don't have a baby but or just like a whole sweater in that Edelweiss. Oh my god. I'm obsessed. And I can't wait to make those socks. But again, we have to finish a whip. I think my neighbors just broke down their entire kitchen. Okay. Um, but I will be very excited when I get to make those socks. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, it's getting dark outside. It's getting very gloomy. And I need to continue working for school. Uh, and then I have to go home and I don't want to get more sick because my what do you call that? Clear my lymph nodes? I don't know what you call it. They're hurting. So I need to stop talking, need to drink tea, need to take a painkiller, like a specific like fizzy tablets. And we need to go home. And I need to take my dirty laundry home. Anyways, um I hope you enjoyed this video. When I was editing the first part, I felt like I was being very rude. Or not rude, but I was just like filming as if I didn't want to be there. And that's not the case. But I was just a little hurried or I felt nervous or something. And I was also sick, so I was not in the best mood. But um, I hope I kind of made up for that in this half. And um, yeah, it's been, I like, I've been off of my regular posting schedule. I like to post on Fridays and last week I didn't post on Friday and then I posted on Monday and now it's been like 10 days since I posted. So I'm trying to get back on track with this knitting podcast and so I hope you like it. I hope my computer is going to allow me to upload it today. I really do because these are very big videos. Um, and yeah, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Monsters Inca. If you want to follow me on TikTok, it's also Monsters Inca. Um, I post quite regularly on Instagram now and I also shit post on TikTok. TikTok is for the not pretty content, for the funny content, and Instagram is for the pretty content. And then YouTube is for both, for everything. Um, you can purchase my patterns on Ravelry. As I said before, my most recent pattern is the pearly and pink cardigan. So go and buy that if you want. Um, on the website, you can see my version and then Threads of Kindness Beautiful version in Drops Air, which I definitely want to make myself too now. 
and um go and buy my balaclava hood guys everybody's buying it and i'm so happy about that i even saw some projects from people and it makes me so happy um yeah and then hopefully soon i'll have the sean sweater out or soon or in the beginning of the new year or whatever and and i'm really excited i'm really excited guys i'm I, i'm feeling good um about my like progression with social media and the little money i'm making off of it and i feel like i add these kind of runs at the end of every video but i'm really really happy especially from that one youtube short that went viral and now i have a thousand thousand five hundred extra subscribers in a month whereas i didn't have any new subscribers for a whole year so I'm really happy about that and maybe one day I will reach those 4,000 watch hours and I'll be able to have some ads on my channel. <laughs> oh my god. Can't wait for the day. That's just like a milestone I have right now. I sound like I'm gonna cry. I'm not. Don't worry. Anyways, I will leave all of my links in the description and I have put my name on the screen. So if you feel like following me, please do. And if you consider buying a pattern, please do. And go to the link in my bio. And that's that. See you next time.